Oh, and it's vegan friendly for all my vegan friends out there. Welcome back to the city set, everyone. <laughs> Boy, I'm a little bit disappointed today, let me tell you. I was supposed to be getting some mail, but it's not coming. So, you guys remember, we talked about these trays the other day that Burby came out with. Bam! These things are money, man. I'm telling you, I really like them. I haven't actually got any plants out of them to transfer into the ground, but I can already tell that there's such well-made trays. And the water tray on the bottom, top notch. Awesome, awesome. The only thing is, and a lot of people were talking about this in the last video that I commented, uh, is that there's no dome to go over top of this, right? There's no dome. So <laughs> I actually picked up a few more of these and I was really bummed because last time I was there they had one that was basically half this size, right? Cut in half and they had that. So I ended up buying them from Burpee's website because I found them on there. My thought was, and this is you know, just something I've been thinking about. Let's see if it works or not. 1020, you get these trays right here. And everybody was saying it'd be nice if they had these trays, right? So the 1020 is the tray, and it comes with sometimes a little dome like this, a humidity dome, basically, right? Uh, but for 1020, you can put a humidity dome over that. It's good for your plants, especially when you're starting seeds. My thought was, oh, maybe it fits, and it doesn't really quite reach if you have two of these larger ones together. But if I had a half of one of these and I put this tray over it, I might be able to sort of make that work to where it fits uh, the lid over top of it and you can kind of create your own humidity dome that way. That was kind of my thought process. But we're still waiting on the mail to show up so we can actually put it to test to see if it works or not. But I mean, it fits right inside the 1020 tray itself. So if you think about it, 10 Tony tray, you got a full one of these, you got a half one in the other side, you put your lid on. I'm telling you guys, this could be a game changer to make these trays even better. So you can usually buy like a, a, a cheap one of these 10 20 trays for, man, you can spend like four bucks, probably buy like 20 of them off Amazon. Uh, so all you would need is one of these to put your heavier tray in just so you can have a humidity dome type cover. So I know it's a lot of money to have two sets of trays, but it could be a, you know, a solution to a problem that people are looking to solve. So I'm just throwing it out there for you guys. Now I did want to mention that about the trays because I think that is something that will work out, but I also wanted to do one of my favorite videos I've been doing. I do like a couple of them every summer and it's usually what did you eat from your garden today? So comment down below what you guys ate from your garden today. I'm gonna share something I ate with my garden. So uh, you're getting to the end of the year. You know, we are getting into the swing of spring and plants and seeds for next year's garden, which means that this year's garden isn't quite here yet, but we're still eating a lot of good stuff out of the garden. You guys seen I've been eating a lot of microgreens that we've been growing a lot lately. And today I made a meal that was almost all from uh, stuff we have either grown right now that's why we have a greenhouse so we can have fresh greens this early in the year. But also, I used some spaghetti squash. So I grew a bunch of spaghetti squash last year, uh, mostly at the community garden plot that we had. And I brought a bunch of that home and I've been kind of like sparingly using it, uh, maybe like once a month, because <laughs> I didn't grow a ton. But I found a really awesome recipe that is spaghetti squash, kale, uh, chickpeas, and some garlic. And you throw anything in the garlic, really, but when it has garlic in the recipe, you know, it really touches my heart. <laughs> oh, because if you're not aware, I grow a lot of garlic. <laughs> All right, well, enough of that. Let's go inside and show you how to make this amazing dinner. Oh, and it's vegan friendly for all my vegan friends out there. First, we're gonna need an awesome spaghetti squash, like this one. I like to cut the top off of mine. It makes it a little bit easier to have it. There we go, right down the eh, sort of center. Good enough. Now the good part. Time to scoop out all of those seeds and guts.
Now we're gonna pick out as many of these seeds as we can because we like to harvest all our seeds and save them for next year so we can grow even more of our own food. A little bit of olive oil makes everything taste better. Swirl it around in there as best you can. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. You gotta stab it. Make sure you get some breathing holes so it cooks better. Rinsing off those seeds before we dry them. Yep, there we go. Now we'll have tons of seeds uh, for ourselves and for our friends and family. All right, chickpeas time. You gotta make sure we rinse these off nice and good. Ha! So. For dinner tonight, I got some garlic. Now this is actually some store-bought garlic that I had planted. You can see it's a much smaller bulb, so I kept most of this for myself. Uh, I didn't give this out for anybody else to grow, and I didn't use this as seed garlic because I knew it wasn't gonna produce very good. But it's perfect for throwing in little dinners that I'm making here and there. So, also, it held really well in my garage, surprisingly. It is kind of cool and dark in there. We also need some kale. So we're going to try to uh, get whatever we can out of here that the boys have not eaten yet. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -da. All right, there we go. We got like three different kinds of kale here. We got that, uh, what is it, dino kale, kind of this flat leafy purplish kale, and then we got a little bit of that curly leaf kale. All right, let's go finish this dinner. Here's our kale and our nifty salad spinner. Probably one of the coolest things I ever bought off the uh, off the Amazon, of course. And you gotta let the kids have a turn because who doesn't like to push the plunger and see it spin? Time for my favorite part: garlic, and cloves. We gotta peel them. Oh, and we gotta chop them. Look at those seamless transitions. Throw it in the pan with a little bit of olive oil and heat it up. Not quite ready. Store bought it is, I guess. Toss in some mushrooms. Now our chickpeas. You're just gonna cook them all up, brown them nice and good. Add our kale, and we're gonna cook that up too. Pull our spaghetti squash out of the oven. Been in there for about 45 minutes at around 400 degrees. They're nice and cooked, perfect. A little bit hot to the touch. You gotta wait, let them cool down a bit. Now we're gonna scoop out all those little spaghetti strands of the squash. And really you just get that by pulling at the uh, flesh with a fork. Add it into our bowl. And then we put our chickpeas, kale, and mushroom on top. Mix it all up. Time to take a bowl to your significant other. Really impress them with your awesome cooking skills. <laughs> bon appetit. You are now an awesome cook. So not only are we saving seeds to grow more food next year from our spaghetti squash, but we're actually using these guts right here and we're feeding our So you can see here that they're really loving this microgreens uh, tray that I threw in there after we harvested our microgreens. Now on top of that we gave them some squash guts. They got a lot of good stuff in this bin to be composting down for us. Alright, well before the lights go out, down in the grill room, do a little bit of water and a little nightly thing that I like to do, you know, for the next meal. All right, guys, be bold, grow bold, and as always, see you in the next video. Peace. I'm out.